what is up hooligans happy freedom welcome to another episode of coffee with hooligans where we try to make the news suck a little less i appreciate all of you guys being here if you're over on rumble please hit that like button more likes equals more hooligans we're gonna read through the schedule really quick and then we'll check on all the chats see how you guys are doing so let me know how you're doing of course get everything rolling let's see checking everything really quick i think we're good to go i think we're good to go all right hooligans well before we get into any of this i want to remind you if you would like to join the website right now is the time to do it click that link at the top of the link tree and register for your free week with no strings attached that way you can watch today's live on the website and get the full experience on the very first day you have three days you got three days or two days or something like that until that link expires so definitely take advantage of that free week over on jeffmaclive.com we're gonna be starting off with a video titled new york city serial puncher victims joining forces to identify the attacker this has been going on on twitter or not twitter tiktok for like two weeks now you just keep seeing women selfie mode oh just got punched in the face I was walking down the sidewalk minding my own business got punched in the face I kind of wonder if some of this stuff is not true, but either way, this is like a trendy thing that's going on right now. Then we got a video titled, This is All Lies and Desperation Tactics, talking about how the Biden administration is mad because uh, they're banning porn books in school libraries. People don't want their children reading graphic, very graphic, explicit <laughs> material while they're at school. They barely know how to read, write, and do math. They don't need to learn how to be gay or anything like that. So old man Walter and his team are all mad about it. Then we got a video titled Pro-Palestinian Protesters Swarm Biden's Fundraiser Event. Blue Team doesn't like Blue Team. What's new? Then we got a video titled Media Covers Biden and Trump's New York City Visit with with rope part. part I can't even say the word. Partisanship. Old man Walter was hanging out with the boys with old bummer and all these other people while president trump was at the memorial or funeral service uh for the fallen officer in new york city i can't talk today i'm having <laughs> i'm going on part two of a shitty day anyways uh president trump may not be in the white house but he's sure doing president stuff then we got a video titled tupac connection for real talking about diddy and speculation if this has anything to do with tupac it doesn't seem like it does but a lot of people think so so that's on the schedule then we have a short video that is titled diddy's chief of staff was Ghislaine Ma maxwell so everyone keeps wondering oh is the diddy thing connected to the epstein thing yeah maxwell was the connection so that's a thing uh then we have a video titled fbi shows up to a woman's porch after meta flagged her for pro-palestinian activity on facebook basically the fbi wants you to elaborate on your memes so be careful what you post on facebook or you might get a visit from the fbi same thing goes for youtube if you watch certain videos on youtube instead of youtube taking the video down they just keep track of who watches what videos and if you watch certain videos that have been flagged by youtube FBI will inquire your information. So just know when you watch YouTube, you're just placing yourself on a list and pretty much inquiring about getting a visit from the FBI. So just know that while you're on YouTube. Fuck YouTube all day. Uh, then we have an interesting... Uh, I don't even know what to call it. A fucking mess that I stumbled across. It's called the F... Or it's called the B4 Movement. It's a bunch of fucking man-haters, which is crazy. I guess this has been going on for a while. I didn't realize it came across came across some crazy woman talking about how women don't need men and you know if all the men died that'd be great and all this other stuff and i thought that was really interesting well then i kind of fell into a rabbit hole uh this is being sold to young women that they don't need men they shouldn't bear children they shouldn't expect uh to be a wife at any point in time and they should basically starve men out until the human race dies for real <laughs> For real, that's what they believe, and they think that's a good thing. So uh, we're gonna cover three videos on that. I don't have links to them because I had to download them all from TikTok. Uh, but that's a thing. And then we have a video about how the 100% emoji is white supreme white supreme pizza. If you say 100%, you're a white supreme pizza. Um, you can't talk about 100. It's always 99 or 101 because if you use 100, you're a white supreme pizza. So just know that. 
Uh, and then our funny video of the day is what it looks like when avocados are planning their future. All of that is coming up next, but first we're going to read through the chat and see how all of you hooligans are doing. Obviously, we were not live yesterday. I had so much stuff going on, and it was all a waste of time, which is great. We'll talk about that in just a second, but first we're reading through the chats. What is up, everyone over on JeffMacLive.com? What's up, 10 Man? What's up, Snooks? What's up, Zero? What's up, Annette? What's up, Matt? What's up, Breeze by You? What's up, Astro Hammer? What's up, Cadillacs and Freedom? What's up, Damsel? Happy Freedom, all of you hooligans. Appreciate you guys being on the website. What is up, everyone over on Rumble? As Russell, you were first today. Appreciate you racing to the chat. True Crazy, you were second. What's up, True Crazy? Snooks, you're omnipresent. I appreciate you. What's up, Addy Walker? What's up, Karen? What's up, Speedy Girl? Appreciate all of you hooligans being here. What's up, Pumpkin? What's up, Kevin? What's up, Salty Ragu? What's up, Tony Rez? What's up, Lori? Happy freedom, you hooligans. Let's see. What's up, Rappy? If I didn't get you. What's up, Baldy Rocks? What's up, Jane and Steve? What's up, Guess some J? Guess some J. Not first. Well, I appreciate you being here. Guess some J. What's up, RK? Happy freedom. What's up, Breeze by you? Appreciate you being here on the live with us. What's up, Bobby? Let's see. I want to get a Neuralink. I'm tired of thinking for myself. I know I'm about right there, Bobby. My my patience and my hope and everything is running out. I don't want to say that. It's not that bad. But man, I'm just tired of dealing with car problems and apartment problems and life problems. So I hear you, Bobby. Let's see. Reading through. What's up, Silver Wolf? Happy Freedom. What's up, Gron? What's up, Mystical Maiden? Appreciate you being here. Happy Freedom, all of you hooligans. What is up, everyone over on Kick? What's up, DeMarquise? What's up, Patriot for Life? What's up, Cat's Eye? Happy Freedom. What's up, Cashflow? Appreciate you being here. Cashflow, I believe this whole Diddy situation is a distraction. I think it's both. I think Diddy, uh, no, I know Diddy's a piece of shit. It's it's very obvious. Um, but I think it is being used as a distraction. I know that the, I keep seeing this, like, warships coming from Russia to the, I don't know, somewhere in the fucking ocean. I don't know the names of all the water in the world, but somewhere and our navy is watching them and stuff so i am seeing a lot of videos on that i do believe it's a distraction but i don't think they're trumping up charges on diddy as a distraction i think those charges are legit <laughs> you know i think diddy I, like i said i don't i i have reason to believe that diddy is not a good person and i think this is just convenient all the way around throw a bad person under the bus keep everyone distracted and people don't know what's going what's really going on in the world so i agree What's up, everyone over on Twitch? What's up, Crazy Times? What's up, Two Ruby Shoes? Happy Freedom. What's up, Mr. Beansy Beans? What's up, Matt? Appreciate all of your hooligans being here. And what's up, everyone over on Communism Tube? Team Orca, yeah, the Red Sea. Thank you. And say, what's up, Toy Mafia? What's up, Kami? Appreciate you being here. Sorry, Regu, you're everywhere, and I appreciate you for that. What's up, T. Lawton? Appreciate you being here. What's up, Spirit Matter? Let's see, make sure I got everyone. What's up, Not Sure? Holy moly, not sure. Try saying, how many dudes did Diddy diddle if Diddy diddle dudes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not sure. I mean, I don't want to hear kids repeating that tongue twister, but you know, that's a good one. What's up, O'Callahan? Appreciate you being here. You need to come over to Rumble, O'Callahan. That's where, the, where all the cool kids are, and you deserve to be over there because you're a cool kid. Appreciate you, O'Callahan. What's up, Blue Crow? I appreciate you, Team Orca. All right, hooligans. We're going to get on to this thing first. I'll tell you about my day. I know some of you don't care, but that's fine because I want to give you guys the reason why I wasn't live yesterday. If you don't know, I was supposed to have my apartment fixed yesterday because I got an inspection last week, which is why I had to take Friday off last week. We took yesterday off because they were supposed to return to my dwelling and repair my leaky faucets in my bathroom. And so... I was able to schedule an appointment over at Subaru to get my all-wheel drive look or the all-wheel drive light looked at because it's just a magical problem that I have and apparently no one else does. And so no one can figure it out. And they were like, yeah, bring that car here at 10 a.m. Well, I can't just leave my giant cat here while strangers are in the house. So I had to take my giant cat with me to Subaru. Let me tell you how fun that was. It was so much fun. I mean, it's way, I'll tell you, it's easier to have a newborn baby with you to go do something like that than it is to take a cat. I promise. Like, he's, he does not want to cooperate. <laughs> he was not a big fan of Subaru. There's a lot of people running around with their heads all the way up their ass. 
And so they told me it was going to take three hours. I got there at 10 a.m., an hour and a half into it. I was then told that the TCM to be reprogrammed doesn't actually need to be reprogrammed. They come self-programmed. They just plug and play. So, okay, well, then are you still going to charge me? Let's see. They said that it. they quoted me for 250 I pulled up. They told me it was 350 I had to argue with this woman about how do you change a hundred like how does the price change a hundred dollars between me being on the phone and me driving here she couldn't explain it to me she had all these fucking excuses and stuff and after chewing her ass long enough into bubble gum she decided oh we can give you the 250 fifty dollar price but then an hour and a half after being there they called me to tell me hey we're not going to worry about the 250 dollars to reprogram your tcm because your tcm is plug and play it doesn't get reprogrammed Okay, well, what the fuck do we do now? Because all-wheel drive light's on, and you said that it was because of the TCM. I replaced the TCM, and it didn't fix it. Where do we go from here? She said, well, we could run diagnostics on your all-wheel drive. And I said, okay, well, you guys did that last week. She said, well, yeah, we'll just have to do it again. I said, okay, well, how much is that going to cost? She said 165 Oh, well, why is it 165 if you charged me 85 last week for the same exact procedure? She said, oh, well, I don't know who gave you that price. That must have been a deal. Well, can you give me another fucking deal? Because I don't want to pay twice the price of getting something done. Especially when you did it last week. You diagnosed my car. You said the TCM needed to be replaced. I replaced the TCM, and it didn't fix my all-wheel drive. So now you're going to charge me double to run the same diagnostics? Make it make sense. And I just told her flat out, your prices are fucked up, and you people don't know what you're doing. I just told her flat out, what are you going to do, fight me? You're going to get knocked the fuck out in your job. Like, calm the hell down telling me some bullshit and she said oh you know i went and talked to the manager he said yeah we can get you that price we'll diagnose the car for 85 okay well that sounds fucking great and i continue to wander around and waste my time with my giant cat wasting my giant cat's time douchebag she says oh yeah we got it all set why don't you come back so i walk back to the shop because i didn't want to sit there and look at those idiots i make it back the lady sees me she says hey i'm printing out your paperwork got your stuff all ready you'll be good to go in a couple minutes i said oh okay that's cool Three hours has gone by at this point. I get out there. I pay her the $85, which comes out to $95 after paying service fees and bullshit. And I said, so what'd you do to fix the light? She said, oh, we pulled your front wheel drive fuse out. And I said, what do you mean? I put the fuse in there because the all wheel drive's not working. She said, oh, we pulled it out and it fixed everything. I said, so you charged me $95 to take my fuse out of my fuse box and then keep my fucking fuse that I'm the one that put there. She said, yeah. Okay, well, that's bullshit. Why don't you take this car up the road and get that all-wheel drive light to flash back on? Because I guarantee you it will. She said, okay, well, why don't we have this guy do it? So the guy comes up, and I explain to him how this works. Get the car up to 55, run this piece of shit for 15 minutes or so, and you'll see that all-wheel drive light come back on. He said, okay. And the woman said, okay, he's going to take the test run. He'll be gone 15 minutes. He'll come back. He'll get you and he'll either give you your keys because your car is good to go or he'll put it in the bay and have a technician look at it. I said, okay. 35 minutes goes by. Nobody's came to find find me. I'm coddling my giant cat to keep everyone safe because he's a hooligan kitty and they're not ready for that. I go out there, nobody knows who I am, they don't know where my car is, they don't know where my keys are, I'm not on file, nobody knows anything about me or my vehicle. So then of course I become upset because I am starting to feel like they're trying to steal my car and uh, being armed makes me feel defensive. So I'm trying to keep my cool, although they don't know me or where my car is all of a fucking sudden. And so I start to unravel a little bit and people see this happening and because of my size and the way I look, people become concerned. And this individual named Trevor comes up to me and wants to know what's going on. So I explain this very long, complex story. And he says, oh, okay, well, let's get it found out. So they find my car. My car's in the bay. The all-wheel drive light did come back on. And so they're trying to figure it out. I said, okay. He said, he's come to get me out of the waiting room. He comes and gets me 15 minutes later. He says, hey, your car is done. I said, okay, well, what did you do? He said, oh, we put your TCM in learning mode. Well, what do you mean? Because I showed up to program the TCM. You took my, my car. Then you told me that the TCM doesn't get programmed. So how the fuck did you just program a non-programmable part of my car? He said, I don't know, but we fixed it said, listen, Trevor, why don't you take my number down, take my, take my name. I'm going to call you in about 15 minutes when I leave this piece of shit. 
And I'll let you know that my all-wheel drive light came back on, because I guarantee you that's what's going to happen. And he said, okay. So he took my name and number and gave me his name and number. And I get down the road, and I call Paul's Auto, because those are my people, and they've been taking care of me and whatnot. And I said, hey, I'm coming down to the shop. I know I owe you $1,800 or something crazy like that. Why don't you take a look at my car, because every time I leave Subaru, I have problems. I'll pay you what I owe. And hopefully everything's fixed. And he said, oh, okay. And before I get off the phone, there's my fucking all-wheel drive light back on. But now my car is howling and jerking to the left. I'm veering off, or to the right, I mean. I'm veering off to the right while my car is howling. I drive 80 fucking miles to Paul's Auto because that's where I need to go to pull my ass out of the fire. And find out they hand-tightened my passenger front wheel. We put it up on the hoist and he reaches over and goes, bloop pulls the lug nuts right off my wheel by hand. So I was driving 75 miles an hour for 80 miles on a wheel that was hand tightened by the Subaru dealership in Muskegon. So that's great. That's great and all. Uh, We think the bearing is bad in the wheel, so we replaced the bearing just to find out that that also did not fix the all-wheel drive light. So I just made my bill bigger, but while we were looking at the car, we couldn't get the bearing yesterday. So then I had to get a ride with my giant cat back to the house to leave my car at the shop and I still don't have my car back. However, I called the shop this morning. They got the wheel bearing, the test drive of the car, the all-wheel drive light came on, but at least I got a brand new bearing on top of my $1,800 car bill. Now, thankfully, Subaru refunded me my $95 for them pulling my own fuse out of the thing because they felt really sorry about the service that I received. So here I am with no car. I need to go get it from the shop at some point today. It's not fixed. I owe $1,800 to the shop and I still have a fucking all wheel drive light on. Also, when I come home, I see that my dwelling is not disturbed. None of my cameras picked any up, uh, picked any activity up. So I call the management and say, Hey, what's going on? Thought you guys were going to fix my shit today. It's why I took the day off. Oh, well, we found out it's going to take another three or four days, not three or four days out, but three or four days where I'm going to receive a notice on my door telling me I may or may not get my fucking house fixed. Okay, so now I got to call down to the fucking agents and shit in Detroit and say, hey, what the fuck's going on? Because you're going to want full rent, right? On the first, you're going to want rent, right? But you don't want me to fucking go to work to make money. So what exactly do you want me to do here? Well, now management will contact me directly instead of taping papers to my fucking door because this is such a fiasco. But at least I got to eat yesterday. It tasted like shit, but at least I made it through it. My whole day was an entire fucking waste. I didn't get anything done, and I still have all the problems I had when I woke up yesterday. So anyways, that's what I did yesterday. Hopefully you guys had a better day than I did. We're going to read through the chat here in just a moment so you guys can tell me you know how stupid I am and all of that and which is fine because I feel the same way and then we'll go ahead and get towards this first video here New York City serial puncher uh, victims joining forces to identify the attacker this is starting to become like a social media trend and we're going to talk about that in a second but first we're going to read through the chat and see what you hooligans think about all of that let's see do 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 breeze by you no one showed up to your appointment either yep it was it was great it was great Raja, you need to log all this BS about Subaru and get a discount. The, so I took my car there last week. They put a wrench to my power steering lines and blew my power steering lines out. And I had to go to Paul's Auto and have it fixed. Then yesterday, they didn't put my fucking wheel on all the way. Like, if I could burn Subaru down and get away with it, I would. Like, that place sucks. It's ran by a whole bunch of 20-year-olds that are too busy snorting pills and hanging out with each other, playing on their fucking iPhones, instead of actually doing their job. Those people fucking suck down in Muskegon. If I could afford a second vehicle or to to get a rent a car or something, I would, and I'd just take that shit to Grand Rapids, which is two and a half hours away. But I don't. I don't have any help. I don't have any money. I don't have any resources. And I'm just about out of hope. Breeze by you, I would have completely lost it at the dealership. I was the angriest person with a giant cat. (laughs) I promise that. They're like, he's he's the mad guy with hand tattoos and a giant cat. They're like, oh, that guy, fuck, yeah, that guy. I called, I called today, and they kept putting me on the the voicemail. 
and I had to call accounting or, or finances or whatever and have them transfer me to Subaru service just so someone would answer the phone because it hides your phone number because they don't want to talk to me because it's that bad. Like it's literally that bad. I had them Google me yesterday and they gave me a refund. That's how that worked. So anyways, reading through the chat. Doo -doo -doo. Mr. Beans Bean sounds like a shade tree mechanic. Yeah, it's, and that's the dealership. And that's the dealership. And remember when I got the blue car and I told you guys I was having the all wheel drive stuff and everyone kept saying, go to the dealership, go into the dealership. And I kept telling you guys, I hate going to the dealership. This is why, this is why. It's all right, Calyx and Freedom. We all have shit days, but that's just how mine went. So I, it really sucked to not be live with you guys yesterday and just have a miserable day the whole day. It took seven and a half hours to find out that no one could fix my car. I was gone for seven and a half hours with a giant cat in my arms. I don't know. I'm tough as nails, I'll tell you that. <laughs> What's up, 10 man? Happy freedom. Breeze by your at a dealership work on a car of mine. Forgot to put the bearings back in the wheels. Well, one of them, it locked up on the highway on the way home. Good times. Yeah, Breeze by you. that's about where I was. My wheel was seizing up while I was going down the road. The dealerships suck. Sure, crazy. It's not your fault you're a lesbian. Call racisms. I know, but everybody there was white. That's the problem. I couldn't even like act like it was racism. It was everybody there was glowing brighter than I was. I was like, holy, I got the darkest complexion in the building. Let's see. Bobby, I don't know anything about repairing cars, but I'm good at diagnosing problems. Nobody can figure out why my all-wheel drive light is on. And I keep trying to suggest doing a transmission swap but the people at the shop are so worried that it's not going to fix my problems that they're like this is going to break you dude like if we have to do a transmission swap you're going to pay so much money that you won't even be able to afford to put gas in your car and i'm like i don't even know what to do at this point I'm like i nobody does nobody knows what to do we've checked the wheels the bearings the axles that everything everything works but doesn't work at the same time so i don't know let's see Grand, we just can't win. I know. Proud American didn't get any Taco Bell. I'm scared to death to spend money. <laughs> I'm racking all these car bills up and nobody's fixing the car at the same time. And it's not those, it's not Paul's Auto's fault that this is happening. They're giving me a deal. They're giving me free labor and all kinds of other stuff. But holy. D. That's why you should have a tracker on it. Yeah. Well, I should, but. That's the thing, if I would have had a tracker on the vehicle, I probably would have lost my cool. I have an issue where I take respect very seriously. I don't talk about it a lot. But if I feel that you're disrespecting me, I'll draw a line in the sand. And I hate that. I hate that, but it's something inside me, it's in my blood. It's like, if I feel you're disrespecting me, I'll draw a line in the sand, and if you cross it, you're toast. You're toast. I will see you as like a, th a threat against my life. And it has caused me many problems when I was younger. So if I had a tracker in my car and I couldn't find my car and I'm tracking my car and they can't track it, that means that they're now a threat to me. And the outcome of that would probably land me in prison. And so I have to actually prevent feeding the beast inside of me because of that. Because things will go left and it'll be my fault. And so I got to play ignorant to keep everyone else safe. <laughs> I have to trick my own mind to keep everyone else safe because otherwise, once I'm off the cliff, I'm off the cliff. Let's see. DeMarquise, well, send Trevor to deal with him. Yeah. Well, and that's what it is. Everybody's passing me around because nobody wants to deal with me because I'm telling them they suck to their face. I told Beth to go and get some, some psychiatric help yesterday. This douchebag, she's got so much fucking attitude. She's like, well, I don't know why you're accusing me of lying. And I leaned really close to her to the point where she could feel the heat radiating off my face. And I said, listen, bitch, if I think that you're lying to me, I will say it to you. I don't have to insinuate anything. And she's like, Trevor will be out in a minute. Good, because I'm about to punch you in the face. Fucking asshole. Great Wolf, quit going to Subaru dealership. Well, that's not going to fix the problem. <laughs> like, that's not going to fix the problem. I need to fix the problem. As much as I would like to leave the dealership. Anyways. 
I like salt. Hell of a day. It, it was. It was. But it's all behind me now. I'm not worried about that. I'm just really would like to get my car fixed because who wants to drive a two-wheel drive Subaru? Not I, said the Mac. So anyways, we're going to get on to some actual news today instead of talking about my sad fucking story. This first one's titled New York City Serial Puncher. Victims joining forces to identify the attacker. Like I said, this is almost like a TikTok trend. This is almost like everybody eating Tide Pods again, but... First, I want to remind you guys, we got these American Hooligan t-shirts. You can get it in black and white. You can get it with red bars. You can get it with blue bars. It comes in shirts for men, shirts for women, tank tops for men, tank tops for women, coffee mugs, stickers, dog tags, pullover hoodies, zipper hoodies, and more. Today, I got on the I am an American, I do not comply t-shirt. Definitely go check out all the designs and items we have on the merch store. I'll drop the link while we're watching this first video. Hold on a second. Everything wants to give me a fucking problem right now. All right, here we go. We don't know who they are or why they're doing it, but for some reason, random men are punching random women on the streets of New York City. Last night on this show, Sarah Harvard detailed her attack. This was last night. She was assaulted on the Lower East Side and says that she knows personally 15 other women who were randomly attacked in the same way. And tonight we have an update. Sarah and a few of the other victims that she's now allied with, uh, same kind of attacks they've undergone in New York City. They're joining forces and they're turning over pictures of a man who matches the description of their serial puncher uh, so that they can compare against surveillance videos that are taken at the times of their assaults. Sarah told us that the police are now hopeful that the photos and the first-hand accounts are going to lead to a positive identification of an attacker. At least one man has already been arrested in New York, but Sarah told us that the man they arrested right there is not the same person who punched her. So the investigation continues. Maybe we're talking about multiple men. Dozens of shocked women have posted social media videos showing their injuries after being sucker punched. And our fingers are crossed that they find the man or men who are out there doing this. That's all the time we have tonight. Stick around. One more. Thank you. So like I said, it's kind of a weird story. Now, I haven't seen it anywhere except for TikTok, but when you scroll through TikTok, what will happen is you'll come across these videos where it shows, you know, some woman walking down the street and she's like, so I just got punched in the face by a stranger. I don't know what happened. I was just walking and some guy ran up and hit me in the face, just punched me right in the eye and then ran away. And I don't know what to do about it. So I'm making this video. I've probably seen 15 of those videos. They're all different women. Now, according to that, they pinpointed a guy that supposedly did this in New York City, but it's not the same guy that punched all those different women. So what this is telling me is that two things is gonna happen. One, dudes are getting away with punching women in the face, probably for TikTok clout. I bet somewhere in the world there's videos, and unless they haven't been released yet, of dudes running up and punching girls in the face as a funny TikTok video. And so it's trendy. Oh, oh, let's go do this, right? Well, not only is it happening, but he's getting away with it. So then other people in town are like, hey, did you hear about the guy punching women in the face and not going to jail for it? And they're like, yeah, I bet that's really funny. Maybe we should go out there and do it since nobody's getting in trouble for it. So now you got more than one perpetrator potentially in the streets doing this. But then the second outcome of this is women see other women making these videos and getting tons of attention, even news attention. And they go, I'm going to record a video and tell everyone I was just punched in the face. And so you have all these women pretending to be victims and all these men out there potentially victimizing women. Oh, well, nobody's doing anything. And it looks really cool on the Internet because you get likes and views. That's what's going on. <laughs> like I said, it's almost like eating Tide Pods again. It's um, it's a mess. <laughs> New York City sucks. <laughs> New York City sucks. I you gotta escape New York. I don't know. It's something. It's not good. It is not good. I will say that. Anyways, next up we have. This is all lies and desperation tactics. Talking about how the Biden administration is bad for banning. 
uh, explicit content in school libraries, you know, the kind of stuff that teaches a person how to perform fellatio on another person, uh, for some reason they want fourth graders to read that shit. And of course, nobody else wants that. And now Blue Team's really mad and they're claiming that by taking those books out of school, you guys are acting like Hitler. It's coming up next, but first we're going to read through the chat. And before we do that, we got to cut off YouTube because I've probably already said too much. And I'd rather not continue on and catch a strike. So if you're over on YouTube, leave YouTube. YouTube sucks ass on all kinds of reasons, and I don't have time to list them all. But we're currently live on Twitch, Kick, Rumble, JeffMacLive.com, as well as Twitter. So please escape the YouTube platform while you still can. Do, do, do. Got to cut off the YouTube. Come on, man. Take forever. There we go. There we go. 